The study in Jim's report was actually the first of its kind in the United States. Just before it was published, my colleague Mike Walter spoke to the lead researcher, Dr. Donald Lloyd-Jones. Our youngest kids, even as early as age two through five, are getting too much sugar-sweetened beverages, too much sodium in their diet, and not enough of the fruits and vegetables and the lean protein. You studied, as you mentioned, children as, as young as two going up to 11. Uh, when it came to their diet, very few are eating correctly. We, for example, we have this uh, graphic to show fewer than 10% of children in your study were eating the recommended amount of fruits and vegetables or fish for that matter. Just about 3% of children were eating the proper amount of whole grains. 90% were eating more sodium than recommended. Is diet the biggest threat to children's heart health at this stage, do you think? You know, I think at this age it really is because this is the age where they're setting up their lifelong patterns in terms of both their, their diet but also their physical activity. And we're already seeing, even in these young ages, that those unhealthy dietary patterns and, you know, too many of them we suspect are not getting enough physical activity, it's already showing up in their weight patterns. And we found that over 30 percent of our sample um, had either overweight or obese levels of their body mass index. So when you look at uh, the world map, uh, the United States, uh, not very good when it comes to kids. The rest of the world, though, are, are they <laughs> attempting to catch up, I guess, in other words? Because we are seeing uh, fast food exported in other parts of the world. We're seeing a lot of people in other parts of the world who are eating healthy, uh, now not so much. How much of a concern is that to you? Well, I think in a, in a number of uh, developing countries, uh, so-called low- and middle-income countries, we do see that as their diet tends to westernize and as their habits uh, uh, tend to be more urban, if you will, uh, and they get less physical activity, even their children are starting to put on weight as well. And you know, we see dramatic consequences of that. For example, in India, there are more heart attacks and death from heart attacks than any other country in the world, and they happen literally about 20 years earlier on average in Indians than they do in Americans. And so they have a real problem on their hands mm -hmm. uh, as they've developed. Uh, we see health studies on uh, things ranging from drinking coffee, red wine, dark chocolate. We read about the harmful effects of smoking. We even read studies about the benefits of laughing. But studies about children and their heart health, those are pretty rare. Why do you think that is? Well, I think we don't see the consequences of uh, children's unhealthy habits getting established at such a young age until decades later. Um, but I think it's very important to recognize that heart disease and stroke, which is obviously closely aligned in terms of its underlying risk factors, the, the disease, that is the changes in the artery that ultimately can lead to a heart attack or stroke, that gets its foothold early in life. And it happens even at these ages we're talking about, ages 2 through 11. So while it's a life course disease, you know, the, the, the kinds of things that establish the ability for arteries to develop plaques happen quite early in life. And, and unfortunately, we're providing far too much fuel for those plaques to get started. So for parents around the world who just listened to what you said, I mean, it, it's alarming. The big takeaway from, their, from your study then, what do they need to do or know uh, that's different than from now. I mean, I, I'm just thinking before coming out to do this interview, I had an apple, but that's rare. I should probably be doing more of that. I mean, should there be more modeling on the part of parenting, or a part of the parents? Um, what are your suggestions? Well, I think, first of all, this is on all of us. Uh, for sure, parents are role models for their kids. So establishing healthy eating patterns at home and making sure that most of the meals are actually served and eaten at home is a, is a really good start. Um, and that, you know, we're cooking what we put on the table rather than having someone else cook it for us. But there's a broader construct here, and I think, you know, we need to be thinking about our policy in schools, about our policy in having communities where kids can get out and play their 60 minutes a day. Um, all these things need to pull together so that we're really creating a culture um, that the default choice is the healthy choice. Dr. Lloyd-Jones, thanks so much for your time.